in the NFL. You know right. about that. And the very last player selected, Andy, do you know what they're called? Yeah, Mr. Irrelevant. Well, that's Jack Danforth. Uh, you know, I don't know that he's going to have much of an influence here. Uh, you know, this Jared Young fellow seems like a nice guy, but he's not going to win. He's not going to be the senator. And uh, so, you know, good for Senator Danforth. Michael? Seeing him makes me a bit nostalgic back to when a Republican Party seemed to have a central core. Uh, and for that matter, when the senator seemed to be more of a mainstream voice inside the Republican Party, I think he's just a lone wolf out there right now, like John says, fighting to be relevant. I don't necessarily like the endorsement that he made. And the reason why is while Jared may be a nice man, I think this is a person who's ultimately pushing an agenda for content and what he's trying to do in social media. And we have real issues to be dealing with in politics. For, not, for people not to be out, you know, trying to make a reality TV show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we are now just two months and a day away from the historic... What did I say? Four days away, right? Two months, four days? It's, it's on right. a Tuesday. Somewhere right? in there. Somewhere. Screw, <laughs> skip the math. <laughs> but the historic 2024 election, it's on the brink. And new polling suggests Missouri is ready to legalize abortion, but not ready to elect Democrats. A new St. Louis University YouGov poll suggests the ballot measure to lift Missouri's abortion ban and allow abortions up to nearly six months of pregnancy has the support of 52% of those polled, 34% opposed. In that U.S. Senate race, Republican incumbent Josh Hawley, double-digit lead over Democrat Lucas Kuntz. Jared Young is not polling at all. The same goes for the governor's race with Republican Mike Kehoe with a safe lead over Democrat Crystal Quaid. Michael, all statewide Republicans have leads at least that big. Yeah, I think it's a false narrative to believe that only Democrats are out supporting this abortion initiative. We're seeing Republicans, uh, independents who worked hard to put this on the ballot. This part of that, that issue's crossing a, across party lines. It definitely discriminates and is helpful to Democrats, but the reality of where we are as a, as a state right now, unfortunately, we're not debating the issues that matter in this state. We've federalized our state elections, so we're having narratives that have nothing to do with state government. And the voters really let, in Missouri, tend to be Republican when it comes to that. Are you surprised the abortion issue doesn't appear in the polling to have a much poll for Democrat candidates? No. And, uh, you know, that narrative was out there that if, if you put abortion on the ballot, it's going to accrue to the benefit of all these Democrat candidates. It's polling. And I've, the polling I've seen uh, says that that's just not the case. Up next on Hancock and Kelly, the race for the White House. Donald Trump making news all over the political map. And Kamala Harris finally sits for an interview. Which one had a better week, her or Trump?
To hear more, listen to the podcast. Just search for Hancock and Kelly. Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris sat down for her first interview since becoming the nominee. She addressed her changing positions on the border crisis, a fracking ban, and a mandate on electric vehicles. The most important and most significant aspect of my policy perspective and decisions is my values have not changed. As a candidate for president in 2019, she supported an absolute ban on fracking, a mandate that only electric cars would be sold by 2045, and the decriminalization of illegally crossing the U.S. border, all positions she has now changed. Your thoughts, Michael? And those were all positions when she lost badly in the Democratic primary, and that was at a time the Democratic Party was moving to this leftist ideology. Joe right. Biden brought us back to the center. What we have here with Kamala Harris is she's had four years of getting to take batting practice. And she's made herself a better, stronger candidate. She's well-disciplined. Of course, a candidate's going to the middle. Geez, I wish Donald Trump would do that. Why can't they just say that? You know, I changed my mind. Instead of saying, well, my values haven't changed because people see that as a wink and a nod to that progressive thing. And if she gets elected, she's going back left. Well, I think that's a concern uh, because we really don't know Kamala Harris that well. And uh, we do know what her positions have been historically. I don't think she, she certainly didn't bomb that interview, but she didn't knock it out of the park either. Uh, and I think voters are, are right to be concerned that she's really a leftist and she's going to say what she needs to say to get elected. And then if she's governing, look out. Democrats point to the changing stances of her Republican opponent, who once favored abortion rights, then bragged about appointing the Supreme Court justices who helped overturn Roe versus Wade. Donald Trump is now proposing a mandate to cover the cost of in vitro fertilization or IVF. The government is going to pay for it or we're going to get or mandate your insurance company to pay for it, which is going to be great. He also said Friday that he does not support Florida's ban on abortion after six weeks. There's a proposal on the ballot to overturn that. In his words, John, Mr. Trump says, I want more weeks. Yeah, and you know, this is interesting because uh, the, the particularly evangelical voters who are pro-life, one of the reasons they really have passionately supported Donald Trump was because of the pro-life position. Wanting more weeks is not a pro-life position, is it? It's a pro-choice position on the IVF. Uh, he, Donald Trump, by mandating that insurance companies cover IVF, is going to raise the cost of insurance. That's what mandates do. It's not a conservative position. It's a populist position. It's a really good issue on how Donald Trump, the populist, is fundamentally different than a, from a traditional conservative Republican. Michael? There's no grand plan here. This is not some strategy that Donald Trump has. Uh, this probably came up on television or in some poll that he saw, and he came out and said this out of his mouth. It may help move him someplace to the middle, but the real question is, is for my entire adult life, the pro-life movement has been principled and pure on their belief. They've also been some of the strongest supporters of Donald Trump. How can they stand by and go along with this? Because Donald Trump just threw them, on, hit them under the bus. Does it help him more with outreach to the other side than it hurts him with the base? If you're pro-choice and that's a voting issue for you, you're not going to vote for Donald Trump if, that, if that's your voting issue. But pro-lifers might be like, I don't know about this guy. Well, and I, yeah, I don't know that he's going to bleed much here, but he does run that risk by taking that particular position. Uh, he's in a tricky spot. Still to come on Hancock and Kelly, a judge puts a proposal for a new Lake of the Ozarks casino on the ballot. And in our quote of the week, Democrats fight to keep candidates like Green Party candidate Jill Stein off the ballot. Is that protecting democracy?